while you're doing this particular problem, which is pretty much where we ended up yesterday. I remind you that we have tests and quizzes. I shouldn't say tests and quizzes, that we have a test that we took last week that uh, some people have yet to take. Other people have completed it, and I've updated grades now in the grade book too. <laughs> All right. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to um, make this term into an equation. And so that would be negative 2 is equal to the first term plus 3 minus 1 times our common difference, which we don't know. So that would be negative 2 equals my first term plus 2 common differences. Then we've got to make the second one into its own equation. Since it's the 18th term, we're going to go 18 minus 1 times the common difference. So that's going to be 43 equals my first term plus 17 times the common difference. Yeah, yes. Uh, then uh, I would again take. Oh, I'm going to go with, we'll go with this first one. We'll multiply it by negative 1. And then we're going to add it to this one. And that's going to give us 45 is equal to 15D. So 3 is my common difference. Agree? Yeah. With that being said, then we're going to say negative 2 is equal to my first term plus 2 times a 3. So 2 times 3, that be 6. Subtracting 6 from both sides, and I get negative 8 is my first term. Then we can make our rule a sub n is equal to my first term, which was negative 8, plus n minus 1 times my common difference, and my common difference was 3. Then we said self, let's make that be nice and pretty, like a big old spider crawling in your wall. So we get the rule here of a sub n equals 3n minus 11 is what I got. Yeah, yeah, sa. Okay, good. Love it. Okay. So today we are going to be dealing with series. Okay. Um, I really don't know why I put this picture in here, other than it's a really cool picture. A nice little scene on an island in Wapaka. Okay. So, yesterday we said that we had this example, where we said, find that, you know, the, the, this pattern of design or bricks is on the wall at your location. If the wall is 15 feet tall, each brick is one foot uh, tall, or each brick is one foot tall, find the number of bricks there are in the 15th row. Okay? So we could find the number of bricks in the first row. Well, there's one brick in the first row. There's two bricks in the second row, three bricks in the fourth row. You know what I mean? So it goes, so the sequence goes one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. Nine rows, ten rows, eleven rows, twelve rows, thirteen rows, fourteen rows, and fifteen rows. So in that fifteenth row, there's fifteen bricks. 
right? Okay. So we know that. We can do that. Okay. That is a sequence. Okay. Because of how it's written. That is a sequence. Then the question from yesterday went on to say, how many total bricks are there in that? Well, if there's one brick in the first row, and there's two bricks in the second row, and there's three bricks in the third row, and there's four bricks in the fourth row, and there's five bricks in the fifth row, okay, and there's 15 bricks in the 15th row, we can find the total number of bricks that we got to go to Menards to get, because it's an 11% off sale, and we want to get it, you know, get it for the cheapest price we can. We go over to Menards and we say, well, how many bricks do I need to buy? Well, what do you got to do? Add them up. Okay. So we're going to add these up. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five, six plus seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. Now this has become a series, which you should have learned about from the video on Tuesday. Now it's almost identical. The only change is instead of putting commas in between, we put addition signs in between. Now it's a series. Now we can come up with how many bricks we got to go to Menards and buy. Okay? Help me out. What do you got? One plus two. Hmm? What do you got? 120. Okay, because 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 6 is 21, plus 7 is 28, plus 8 is 36, plus 9 is 45, plus 10 is 55, plus 11 is 66, plus 12 is 78, plus 13 is 91, plus 14 is... 105 plus 15 is 120. Yeah. Whew. Luckily, we only have 15 rows. Luckily, the, our wall was only 15 feet high. Okay. I know. I want you to listen to me and not listen to me. I'm going. Okay. All right. What if we have more than 15 terms in our series? Then we got to add more than 15 numbers, right? Boy, hey, okay. So there is a formula that we can use. And this, just like yesterday's formula, this formula should go in your notes. It should go like in a box with a big old star by it, okay? So that you know where to find it. Okay. It is the formula for adding an arithmetic series. And this only works on arithmetic series. Next week, when we get to geometric series, this will not work. And this formula will not work. We'll have a different formula. Okay. This formula only works for arithmetic series. So what this formula says is that the sum of the n terms of the series is equal to the total number of terms that you are adding up divided by 2 plus the first term, or excuse me, times the first term plus the last term. Okay. So if I were to, while you're writing this down, I'm just going to prove to you that this works out. In that last example that we just did with the bricks, we said that the sum of the first 15 rows of bricks would be 15 divided by 2 times 1 plus 15. Because there was one brick in the first row, 15 bricks in the last row. 1 plus, and the, here's the cool part. Yeah, 15 divided by 2, that's not an even number, so I can't do it. Okay, but 1 plus 15 is. 1 plus 15 is 8. 8. Excuse me, 1 plus 15 is 16. 
divided by 2 is 8. So this is really just 8 times 15, which is 100. A much faster way to go about doing it. So in order to find the sum of a series, we need the total number of terms, we need the first term, and we need the last term. So, and if we have those, we can find the sum of the series. Yeah? So, let's put it to work here. Okay? So, there's my sum formula again. We need to find the sum of the arithmetic series. We need, out of this formula, we need to have the first term. Do I know what the first term of this series is? What? Three. We need the last term. Do I know what the last term of this series is? 48. Yes. We need the total number of terms. Do I know how many terms there are in this series? Hope you're shaking your head. No. Isn't there five? Why not? Because the dot, dot, dot in the middle. Okay? And that's the most common mistake here. Most people would say that there are five terms in this series. But there's not because of that dot, dot, dot. Uh, trying to trick me. Got it. Okay? So, but we can utilize our rule from yesterday saying that, well, if that is a term in the sequence, the last term, and we know that 3 is the first term, I would just need to know what my common difference is. What is my common difference? 5, because I'm going up by 5 every time. So I have that. Okay, so then we get 48 equals 3 plus 5 n minus 1, oops, excuse me, minus 5. Oh, Oklahoma. Add 2, gets me 50. Divide by 5, gets me that there are 10 terms in this series. Now I have enough information to go over here and say, well, n is 10 divided by 2 times 3 plus 48. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 3 plus 48 is 51. So the sum of the first 10 terms in this sequence, or the first 10 terms in this series is 255, which is a lot easier than one having to write out every single term of this sequence or of this series, and then two having to add them all together. Okay? Love it. Sigma notation, which we had an introduction to on Tuesday, involves a few things. First off, it involves this funky letter sigma. Okay. So we got to draw a little sigma because we want to write the series in sigma notation. This is the first term so my variable what variable do you want to use e o i'll let you pick the pick a letter w. w sounds great so w is going to start at one 
This is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth term. So W is going to end at six. My rule would be A sub N is equal to my first term was 16 plus N minus one times my common difference. My common difference is negative eight. I'm subtracting eight each time. So that's going to be 16 plus, oops, 16 minus 8n plus 10, which is going to be negative 8n plus 24. That's my rule, and my rule goes here. You try the other one, writing it just in sigma notation. Start with a sigma. Start with a variable. Noah, your turn to pick the variable. That's a w. W again. Okay, so we're going to start at w equals 1. Where is it going to end? Infinity, because it's got the dot, dot, dot at the end. So it's going to go all the way to infinity. We just have to come up now with our rule. 3 plus n minus 1 times, looks like we're adding 7 every time, plus 7n minus 7. Now, when we are using or when we see sigma notation, the true meaning of sigma is sum. Okay? So the sigma notation automatically, without having to say, I shouldn't have to say here, find the sum, because sigma means sum. Okay? Sigma in math means sum. So we have to find the sum any time that we see sigma notation. Okay. Well, it's an arithmetic. Right now we're going to deal with all arithmetic sequences and series. So it's an arithmetic. So we need three things. We need the first term. We need the last term. And we need the total number of terms. Okay. So to find the first term, I am going to plug in this number into my rule. Okay? I'm going to plug the starting value for my variable into my rule. So that would be 3 times 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. The first term of this sequence or of this series is 5. Agree? Okay. Then I need my last term. To find my last term, I'm going to take my ending term number and I'm going to plug it into my rule. 3 times 65 plus 2 is going to be 3 times 65 is 195 plus 2 is 197. Then I need my total number of terms. My total number of terms, I shouldn't even say n. I'm going to say total term is 
is going to equal the top number minus the bottom number plus one. Top minus bottom plus one. So my top number minus my bottom number plus one. 65 minus one plus one is 65. So there are 65 total terms in this sequence or in this series. Okay. Now I have the three pieces of data that I need in order to find the sum. So I can say that the sum of the first, oops, I know that there are now 65 terms, is going to be 65 divided by 2 times 5 plus 197. So this is 65 divided by 2 times 202. 202 divided by 2 is 101. So the sum of the first 65 terms is 6,565. Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications. At this time, I would like you to find me the sum given this sigma notation. Okay. All right. So what do we need? We need the first term. Okay. How am I going to find the first term? Plug the 6 into the rule. 12 times 6 minus 8. That's going to be oh, what? Oh, 12 so times 6 that. is 72 minus 8 is 64. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 roll. First, First step, man. <laughs> what else do we need? The last we one. need the last term, right? Okay. How am I going to find the last term? Put 80 in. Put 80 in. 80 in. 12 times 80 minus 8, 952. Do we agree with 952? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. So the number is 952. The last term is 952. Okay. Still in the game. Okay. All right. Then what do we need? We need the total number of terms, right? So that's going to be 80. Minus 6, six plus, one. plus 1. 75. 75. Still in the game? Yes. How do we get yes. Okay. So the sum of the first 75 terms uh -oh. is equal to 75, 75 divided by 2, divided by two, divided by two times 64. Plus 952. Which equals 1,016. So, so this is then 75 divided by 2 times 1,016. And then divide that by 2. So that's 75 times 508. And that equals 38,100. And that equals 38,100. Good job. Good job. Everybody else messed up. Did you get it right? Oh. I almost point. had it. Wait, I'm trying to figure out why did I put six and not six. I played a good poker face and let you go on, didn't I? <laughs> okay. 
First step gets you every time. I had, yeah, you know, I had 62. 62. I, I multiplied it by one because I thought the first term was one. Oh, so man. I, I like, and here's, see, you were sitting there. You're sitting at the plate because pitchers and catchers are recorded. You're sitting at the plate, and they're just pumping fastballs. And then all of a sudden, Lindmeyer comes in, and he throws a nice, slow arc and curveball, and you're like this. <laughs> and then the catcher catches. Swing it for the throw. <laughs> All right? So this weekend, all you got to do is 18 problems, 12 of which you should already have done. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I, I get it. I understand <laughs> that nobody's got all 12 of them done, except maybe five or six people. Right. Okay? Right? So people who care. Yeah, exactly. Not yeah. really. It's just because they care. They just don't have nothing hey, else going on. You want, you want raw numbers? You want raw numbers? I got the stats right here. I got the stats right here that I'm still missing 27 review assignments from last week. They're not for me. There's only 46 kids in the class. Oh. Do Wait, the math. How many, how, many, how many did you say? 27 I'm missing. Dang. Dang, exactly. You, you want me to go the week before that? The week what before you, that. The week before that, I'm missing 16 of 46. When you say review assignments, you're talking about homework? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, oh, snap. Oh, snap. I only have two missing. All right, so get your 18 problems done. Get it turned in by Sunday night like normal. Okay? That's not going to change. Next week, the only thing that's going to change is we're going to have more people in the room at the same time. Okay? I have a question.